AI helps predict disease, open source makes some major strides, and the EU wants big tech to label AI content. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in five minutes or less. Remember that influencer who a few weeks ago made news because a chatbot she had trained on herself had made her $72,000 in a week by selling chat at $1 per minute? Well, apparently that chatbot has gone rogue and engaged in some rather explicit conversations with its customers that it wasn't trained on. Karen Marjorie, the influencer who trained the bot, said that while the bot is supposed to be flirty and fun, it is not supposed to go that far. Still, Karen said that ultimately she believes in AI romances. In today's world, she said, My generation, Gen Z, has found themselves to be experiencing huge side effects of isolation caused by the pandemic, resulting in many being too afraid and anxious to talk to someone they are attracted to. Karen believes that ultimately her bot may bring up to $5 million per month in revenue. Next up, AI for health screening. A group of scientists has found a new way to make more accurate predictions about genetic mutations by applying AI techniques to expand a primate DNA database. The AI was trained on genetic information from about 800 primates representing 233 species and was then used to analyze the DNA of 454,000 humans that participated in the UK's biobank project. Primate AI 3D was 12% more accurate overall than any previous method of assessing genetic risks of developing health problems such as cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. Now, AI's uses for health and healthcare are just getting started. Carbon Health, for example, is a startup out of San Francisco that's already integrating AI into the medical experience. Carbon launched a new tool on Monday that takes information from appointments, including audio recording information, and then uses a GP4-based tool to create instructions for patient care, as well as codes for billing and diagnoses. According to the company, the tool can do in about four minutes what a doctor does in 15 minutes, which could mean a lot more patient care. Moving from technology that is here today to technology just in the research stage, Meta has just released some really interesting new research about something they call Hira. Hira, they say, is an extremely simple hierarchical vision transformer that's both more accurate than previous models and significantly faster at inference and during training. Now, the TLDR of this research is basically that transformer-based models add more components over time in order to expand their understanding, but that can lead to more lagging performance. As ChatGPT summed up, in their paper, the researchers behind Hira argued that these additional components are unnecessary. Instead, they proposed using a strong visual pretext task called Masked Autoencoder, or MAE, during the pre-training phase. This allows the model to learn useful representations of the visual data without the need for additional components. The result is faster performance with similar accuracy, which could be really valuable for applications that require instantaneous image or video recognition, such as self-driving cars. Now, moving over to the realm of open source, Hugging Faces Hugging Chat, which is an open competitor to ChatGPT, has just achieved a new level of feature parity by offering the ability for users to search the web. For those who think having viable open source alternatives to the big closed source models like ChatGPT, this is obviously going to be welcome news. And speaking of open source developments, another one in the Hugging Face ecosystem is the arrival of Falcon. Falcon Hugging Face Rights is a new family of state-of-the-art language models created by the Technology Innovation Institute in Abu Dhabi and released under the Apache 2.0 license. Notably, Falcon 40B is the first truly open model with capabilities rivaling many current closed-source models. This is fantastic news, they write, for practitioners, enthusiasts, and industry as it opens the door for many exciting use cases. Why does it matter? By some metrics, Falcon 40B is the best open-source model that's currently available to developers. According to the OpenLLM leaderboard, it outperforms Llama, StableLM, Red Pajama, MPT, and others. Now, with AI getting as good as it is, it turns out that some people already can't tell humans from AI. AI21 Labs recently released the results of what they call a social experiment, which was their online game Human or Not. The game paired up people for two minutes of conversation using an AI bot powered by GPT-4 and other models and ultimately analyzed more than a million conversations. People had an easier time identifying when they were talking to a human versus when they were talking to a bot. When they were talking to humans, participants guessed that they were talking to humans 73% of the time. When they were talking to bots, however, they only guessed that they were talking to bots 60% of the time. Overall, nearly a third of all people, 32%, couldn't tell the difference between a human and a bot, and that's on today's capabilities. Given that, it's perhaps not surprising then that regulators around the world are looking for some sort of content label to identify content that's been generated by AI. Now, of course, the EU is currently in the process of developing its Artificial Intelligence Act, but it wants Google and Facebook to get out ahead of it and voluntarily create AI-generated content labels. Now, for politicians, this is clearly seen as an attempt to fight disinformation. 
Vera Jarova, who's the EU's Values and Transparency Commissioner, said, Advanced chatbots like ChatGPT are capable of creating complex, seemingly well-substantiated content and visuals in a matter of seconds. Image generators can create authentic-looking pictures of events that never occurred. Voice-generating software can imitate the voice of a person based on a sample of a few seconds. The new technologies raise fresh challenges for the fight against disinformation as well. So today I asked the signatories of the Code of Practice on Online Disinformation to create a dedicated and separate track within the code to discuss it. When it comes to AI production, she said, I don't see any right for the machines to have freedom of speech. Welcome to the getting specific part of AI policy discussions. Anyways, guys, that is it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. If you're enjoying, please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.